Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. In this video, we're going to look at several awesome targets you can see with a telescope every night of the year. This, of course, assumes it's not cloudy. This is Learn to Stargaze. So before we get into the list of targets, we need to understand why some targets in space are seasonal and some are always visible. And this has everything to do with where you live on Earth. Now it's important to note that this does not have anything to do with where you live east or west. It only has to do with how far north or south you are from the equator. So as a quick example, I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, which is exactly as far north as Newport, Oregon. Which means that although the sun sets about four hours later in Oregon, we share the exact same view of the stars on any given night. And if you recall from one of our previous videos, if you live in the northern hemisphere, there are stars to the north that never dip below your horizon. And if you live in the southern hemisphere, there are stars to the south that never dip below your horizon. We say that these stars are circumpolar, and the amount of sky that is circumpolar depends on your latitude, your distance from the equator. So how do you know how much of your sky is circumpolar? Well, starting from the North Star, it's an amount of sky equal to your latitude. So if you're here at the North Pole, the North Star is directly overhead, and your entire sky is circumpolar. No stars rise or set, they just spin around you. And if you're standing here on the equator at zero degrees latitude, the North Star is near the horizon, and none of the sky is circumpolar. But let's say you're in San Francisco right here at about 37 degrees latitude, then the 37 degrees surrounding the North Star is circumpolar. And you can easily measure angular distance in the night sky using your fist at arm's length. Your fist is equal to about 10 degrees of sky. So at this point, I hope you're getting the idea that although this video is about stuff you can see all year, that's going to mean something slightly different depending on how far you are from the equator. That said, objects that are almost circumpolar for you can generally be viewed at some point during the night. This is because they're only below the horizon for a few hours or so. You can see this if you point your camera to the north and take a long exposure photograph for let's say 10, 20, or 30 minutes. You can see those star trails rising from the horizon. Those are obviously stars that were below the horizon when you started taking the photo. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose objects in the northern hemisphere that are completely circumpolar for most people living in the United States, Europe, South Korea, and Japan, and of course all those living anywhere north of those places, like, well, Canada. And if you live closer to the equator, you'll probably be able to see these objects at some point during the night you just might need to wait until the object is high enough above your horizon. So there are two bright star patterns that are circumpolar for most people in the Northern Hemisphere, and that's the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia. These are on opposite sides of the North Star, so if one of these is high in the sky, the other is low, and so on. I always use the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia as a guide to find the circumpolar deep sky objects. So first, my favorite year-round target, and that's NGC 457. Now I check on this cluster almost every time on stargazing. It's especially impressive to those who are new to stargazing because it gives them an immediate taste for the beauty of open star clusters. And the reaction I get from showing this cluster to people is on par with showing people Saturn. Their response is typically, wow, 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 I totally see it. This cluster can be found in any telescope and generally in any skies, no matter how light polluted. It often goes by the name the Dragonfly or the Owl Cluster, but also by the name the E.T. Cluster from the Steven Spielberg movie, E.T. Can you see the resemblance? You can find NGC 457 by looking at Cassiopeia as a big W and lining up the two leftmost stars as follows. The second target is one of the most popular binocular targets in the sky, and that's Kemble's Cascade a perfect line of stars that stretches across your binocular or small telescope field of view that's almost six times as wide as the full moon. 
Now the way to view this cascade of stars in the telescope is to start at one end and pan down to the other, appreciating the beauty and subtle variation in color of each of the stars. At one end of the cascade lies a prominent open cluster of stars called NGC 1502, or the Jolly Roger Cluster. So you'll definitely want to check that out as well. Now Kempel's cascade is found in the dim constellation Camelo Pardalis. To find it, use Cassiopeia as a guide and move clockwise around the North Star about the length of Cassiopeia. Now the cascade cannot be seen with the naked eye, so you'll need to point your telescope, binoculars, or finder at just the right spot. That said, because this object is large, it's not that difficult to find. This is the Swimming Alligator, or NGC 7160. Now I'm not sure what it is that makes students like this one so much. I mean, basically, it's two bright stars with a little tail of stars trailing off behind it. But for whatever reason, it makes people smile. To find the Swimming Alligator Cluster, look counterclockwise from Cassiopeia to find this square of stars in the constellation Cepheus. By looking around inside the square, you'll find this cluster without much difficulty. However, it may require adding a higher powered eyepiece to optimize the view. These are galaxies M81 and M82. Now, for whatever reason, I've always found these galaxies to be the easiest galaxies to find in the entire sky. I even find them faster than I find Andromeda. All I do is line up these two stars here in the Big Dipper and double the distance. If I point my finder at this exact spot, I can almost guarantee these galaxies will appear in the eyepiece, even from the city. Now these may be a challenge in very small telescopes, in which case you may need to go to darker skies, but even with four inches of aperture, I haven't had a problem finding these targets from the city. And while you're in the area, you might as well check out Mizar and Alcor, the most famous double star in the sky. Anyone with good eyesight can see these stars without a telescope, but seeing Mizar split into two separate stars with a telescope is always a treat. And just a reminder that these objects can be found in my book, 50 Things to See with a Telescope. If you're new to astronomy, telescopes can be very frustrating, and it can be difficult to find things in the night sky. My books solve these issues with easy to follow instructions on how to use your telescope and clear star maps for finding deep sky targets. If you're enjoying the content here on Learn to Stargaze, please consider purchasing one of these books on Amazon. And now I want to take a moment to talk about a few targets for those living south of the equator, or for those considering taking a stargazing vacation. Now technically these targets can be seen by those living in the southern parts of the northern hemisphere, but they are not year-round targets from these locations. But first, I have to admit that I have only stargazed from southern-ish locations, such as the Caribbean and Hawaii, but I have not yet traveled south of the equator. However, I did create a Southern Hemisphere edition of 50 Things to See with a Telescope for an organization called Passage that plans to fly astronomy books and telescopes to remote villages in South America. We also had these books translated into Spanish. Although I have not personally been to the Southern Hemisphere, I have been far enough south to see the Southern Cross and a few Southern Sky targets. And I did have experts check my work for the Southern Hemisphere editions of the books. Now the most important constellation in the Southern Hemisphere to be used as a reference for finding deep sky objects is the Southern Cross. The Southern Cross can be used to find the South Celestial Pole by following a line from the top through the bottom of the cross as follows. However, unlike the Northern Celestial Pole, there aren't any bright stars near the South Celestial Pole. So that said, here are a few year-round targets for those living south of the equator. The first year-round target for the Southern Hemisphere is the Jewel Box, found right here beside the Southern Cross. This is a beautiful open cluster, visible in binoculars and small telescopes. On the other side of the Southern Cross, we have the Great Nebula in Carina, which in dark skies is a great target for binoculars, but it is a fantastic target in medium-sized telescopes. On the other side of the Southern Celestial Pole from the Southern Cross is 47 Tucani, the second brightest globular cluster, which takes up almost as much sky as the full moon. Any telescope or binocular should be able to pick this up even from light polluted skies. Just look near the bright star Beta Hydrus opposite the Southern Cross from the South Celestial Pole. If you have really dark skies, you'll find 47 Tucani right beside the small Magellanic Cloud, and you'll be able to see it even without a telescope. And finally, here's one you can't miss. The third brightest star in the sky and the closest star system to Earth, Alpha Centauri. 
through a telescope, this star is a beautiful double star. Alpha Centauri is near the Southern Cross and it's very bright. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can't miss it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about year-round targets for your telescope. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm posting new videos all the time. And remember, the future is looking up.